Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard, where we set out to remember and celebrate the lives of those who lived to entertain us by visiting their final resting places. Today we conclude our tour of Holy Cross Cemetery, where we'll find such stars as Rosalind Russell, Ricardo Montalban, Lawrence Welk, and many more. Join us, won't you? For this final stretch of our tour of Holy Cross, we'll be visiting grave sites spread across the grounds of the cemetery. Gas up that car and get your mixtape ready, because we've got a lot of driving ahead of us. There's a lot to see, including more of those awesome trees. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out parts one and two. Our first stop is across the street from the grotto in section D. Before TMZ, the original queen of Hollywood gossip was Luella Parsons. Her career began in the 1920s, her column in the Los Angeles Examiner eventually garnering a readership of more than 20 million. She saw herself as the social and moral arbiter of Hollywood, the weight of her words able to make or break a movie or a star. She also had a radio program which featured movie star interviews. Here she is in 1947 interviewing a 15-year-old Elizabeth Taylor about her first on-screen kiss. Elizabeth, I know that in Cynthia you received your first green kiss. And since I've never heard of any kiss that didn't start some conversation, suppose we start talking about this one. Of course, Miss Parsons. I'll talk about anything you suggest. Oh, but that kiss in Cynthia was just a little old pan. <laughs> Next, we head north of the grotto to Section T. Apologies in advance that some of the graves we'll be visiting today are a little hard to read. Several spaces south of the statue is director Leo McCary. He specialized in screwball comedies like Duck Soup and The Awful Truth, and is credited for bringing Laurel and Hardy together. Other films include Going My Way with Bing Crosby who is buried nearby, and An Affair to Remember. The next section west is section R. Here we find the King of Calypso, Sir Lancelot. He is credited for popularizing calypso music in North America, influencing artists like Harry Belafonte. He appeared in several films in his career, including the 1943 film, I Walked with a Zombie. Her eyes are empty and she cannot talk, and a nurse has come to make her walk. The brothers are lonely and the nurse is young, and now you must see that my song is sung. A woe, a me, shame and sorrow for the family. A woe, a me, shame and sorrow for the family. Around the corner, still in section R, straight up from the T intersection, is Darby Crash. He was founding member and singer for the band The Germs, who were an influential punk rock band of the late 70s. They only released one album, G.I., in 1979. Crash committed suicide by heroin overdose in 1980 at the age of 22, just one day before John Lennon was killed. Continuing around and up the hill we reach section S on the left. Several spaces in from the road is dancer and actress Gilda Gray. She popularized the dance known as the shimmy in the teens and twenties. Don't know what the shimmy is? Gilda, care to demonstrate? The move was often considered obscene and was banned by many dance halls of the era. Let's continue around to section M. Several spaces in from the west side is one of Hollywood's most legendary directors, John Ford. He won four Oscars in his career and is remembered for timeless classics like The Grapes of Wrath and westerns like Stagecoach. Ford was also one of the filmmakers featured in the Netflix documentary Five Came Back, which profiles five movie directors, including George Stevens, Frank Capra, William Wyler, and John Huston, who left the glamorous Hollywood life behind to join the war effort and document humanity's greatest conflict. To put to film the realities of World War II and allow everyone to see what was happening from the front lines. 
the Battle of Midway was eventually shown in three quarters of American theaters. It was the first time Americans saw the war in color, which until then had been associated with escapism and fantasy. It was also the first time the audience witnessed an American victory. Yes, this really happened. At the center of this lawn is a large crucifix, which marks the final resting place of actress Rosalind Russell. She starred alongside Norma Shearer and Joan Crawford in the 1939 film The Women, and is perhaps best remembered for her role as fast-talking reporter Hildy Johnson in His Girl Friday. Oh, I've got some news for you. Yes, yes, I got the interview all right, but I've got some more important news. Now, perhaps you better get a pencil and take it down. All ready? Now get this, you double-crossing chimpanzee. There ain't gonna be any interview, and there ain't gonna be any story. And that certified check of yours is leaving with me in 20 minutes. I wouldn't cover the burning of Rome for you if they were just lighting it up. And if I ever lay my two eyes on you again, I'm gonna walk right up to you and hammer on that monkey skull of yours till it rings like a Chinese gong. She also found success on Broadway, winning a Tony Award in 1953 for her role in Wonderful Town. At the far east side of this lawn, right near the road, is Hollywood's first supermodel, Evelyn Nesbitt. Long before Janice Dickinson and long before Cara Delevingne, Evelyn Nisbet was the fresh-faced young woman who adorned all the magazine covers. And not just magazines, but paintings, illustrations, calendars, and more. Evelyn was the cultural and fashion icon of a generation, beginning in the very early 1900s. In 1906, she was embroiled in a scandal which became known as the Trial of the Century, when her then-husband shot and killed Stanford White, who had once taken advantage of an underage Evelyn. She also had a brief acting career in films like 1917's Redemption. A fictionalized biopic was made about her life in 1955, starring Joan Collins as Evelyn. Let's head north past the mausoleum to section Y. Straight west from the T intersection is Lawrence Welk. He was one of the 20th century's greatest TV stars, hosting his own musical variety show, The Lawrence Welk Show, from 1951 to 1982. From Hollywood, we bring you The Lawrence Swalk Show. And now, our musical host, maestro, Lawrence Swalk. Thank you, Bob. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, my good friends. A pleasant good evening and a warm welcome. Our show this evening is titled Hit Songs from the Movies. And what could be more appropriate for an opener than Hooray for Hollywood? One, two, three, four. <laughs> The next section north is CC. In from the Western Road, several spaces, is Chris Penn. He was an actor known for roles in films like Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs and The Funeral. He is the brother of actor Sean Penn. He died of heart disease at just 40. Heading further into this lawn, a few rows south, is Mary Fran. She is perhaps best remembered for her role as Bob Newhart's wife, Joanne, on the popular 80s sitcom, Newhart. Straight north, towards the statue, is Helen O'Connell, known as the quintessential big band singer of the 1940s. Here she is singing one of her hits, Green Eyes. There's cool and limpid, green eyes, a pool wearing my love so deep that in my searching for happiness I feel. That they will ever haunt me All through my life they'll taunt me But will they ever want me? Green eyes, I love you Northwest on this same lawn is actor Vince Edwards. He is best remembered for playing the title role in the 60s TV series Ben Casey, and can also be seen in the 1968 film, The Devil's Brigade. Across the street, straight north, is Mexican actor Ricardo Montalban. He starred as Mr. Rourke on the television series Fantasy Island from 1977 to 1984. He also played the diabolical Khan 
on Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left her, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead planet, buried alive, buried alive. Straight west is Section BB. Near the southeast corner of this lawn is the unmarked grave of Paula Winslow. She was a radio and television actress best known for providing the voice of Bambi's mother in the 1942 film Bambi. She can also be seen in shows like The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet and Our Miss Brooks. In 1937, when Jean Harlow died while filming Saratoga, doubles were used to finish her scenes. Paula provided her voice. The next section south is AA. A little ways in from the West Road, just near a tiny tree, is Jean Peters. She was an actress popular in the 1950s, seen in films like Pick Up on South Street and Niagara with Marilyn Monroe. She resisted being turned into a sex symbol, refusing roles that were too exploitative. She preferred playing more down-to-earth women. She was also the second wife of Howard Hughes. Fans of Jack Benny will recognize our next star. Just east of the statue in Section W is Dennis Day. He was a singer and actor, often featured on the Jack Benny program, both on radio and television. He would remain with the show from 1939 until it ended in 1965. In this same section, but further southwest, about a third of the way in from the road is Joe Flynn, a character actor popular in the 60s. His best known role is as Captain Binghamton, Old Leadbottom, on McHale's Navy. He also had several roles in Disney productions, including The Rescuers. Heading southwest, we arrive at Section H. In the southwest corner, right near the road, is animator and filmmaker George Pal. He was a pioneer of early stop motion and puppet animation, being nominated for an Oscar seven years in a row for a series of animated short films, which he branded Puppetoons. They were novel for their use of replacement puppets with unique expressions, rather than animating a single puppet. He went on to produce several fantasy and science fiction films, including Tom Thumb and The Time Machine. It was disconcerting to see the sun arc in less than a minute. To see a snail race by. My flowers flinging wide their petals to embrace the new day. And the hours speeding across the face of my sundial. Finally, we continue down to Section B. Right next to the road, between Fitzsimons and Rocco, is the unmarked grave of Pinto Kolvig, one of the most recognizable voices in Hollywood and a human sound effects machine. Pinto was the original voice of Disney's Goofy, who made his first appearance in the 1932 short film, Mickey's Review. <laughs> Pinto would go on to voice the beloved character until his death in the 1960s. He voiced many other Disney characters, including Grumpy and Sleepy in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. He was also the original Bozo the Clown. Later in life, he was one of the pioneers in advocating health warning labels on cigarettes. And that concludes our tour. What are some of your favorite memories of the stars we visited today? Share them in the comments below, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more famous grave tours. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Have I mentioned how much I love these trees? They'd make a great backdrop in a horror film, you know? Let's test that theory.